Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be discussing the difference between block periodization, conjugate periodization and concurrent periodization. So essentially block periodization is focusing on improving one component of fitness at a time. So say like in a certain block you'll have a hypertrophy block, a strength block, a power block. And in concurrent periodization, basically each like each training period you're, you're focusing on two or more components at once and improving them. So say in concurrent you'd be training strength and hypertrophy within the same block or sometimes even within the same workout. And then conjugate is where you train all three components at the same time. You train the components at the same time, however, you're only focusing on improving one. So say same block you same block periodization in preparation for a meet, you might start off with like hypertrophy, power, strength. <laughs> you do like a six week block on each one, four week block. It's just irrelevant, don't get hung up on the period of time, depending on how you program it. Basically you're going from phase to phase to phase in a sequence. And the, the idea of setting the sequence out to improve performance at one specific point. Similarly, in concurrent periodization, you're kind of like trying to improve, trying to improve everything at once, basically. So you got instead of having different blocks, you try and improve two or more components at once. So you might be trying to say, say before a meet, you might train hyper, you might try and put an emphasis on hypertrophy and power, and then going into the meet, switch to strength. But at all times, you're still like trying to improve. Hypertrophy wise, you're still trying to improve, you know, you're still trying to improve all components at one time. Um, the drawbacks of this is it's not always possible. Like an advanced, advanced lifter, it's not going to be possible for them to, um, them to improve all the components at once. So then we need something like block periodization. But on the other hand, we have conjugate periodization. So conjugate periodization basically covers the loopholes. The problem with block periodization is by the time you finish the third block you've already lost some of the adaptation from the first one. So you, you're losing the adaptation and basically you're back where you start again. Next time you come back round to your hypertrophy block you're going to be you're going to perform worse. So conjugate basically conjugate allows you to um, get the benefits of doing concurrent training without the disadvantages. Like if you try and prove everything at once it's not possible. Uh, but whereas conjugate periodization allows you to maintain the other factors, so you're not losing performance, you're not losing power or hypertrophy, whilst you're gaining strength. So kind of you're not losing the adaptations from them, and you're focusing on one, which allows you to improve at one in that period of time. And um, the emphasis in conjugate can switch, like it can be max strength, then other like, however, something like. The most the most commonly used conjugate method is the like west side. So you're training max strength with your max effort exercises, power with your dynamic effort exercises, hypertrophy for the repetition effort method with your assistance exercises. But west side, it can, like it can be a concurrent or a conjugate. Like it's traditionally accepted it's a conjugate periodization. But if you're still trying to push your assistance work and improve, increase volume in your assistance work and improve hypertrophy, it can be, it can be concurrent as well. Um, yeah, if there's any questions, if there's any questions guys, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Out.